Kyotaro sits in his classroom, engrossed in a murder encyclopedia, while his classmates socialize. Amidst the chatter, he repeatedly acknowledges that he messed up in the head. Kyotaro, a troubled student, daydreams about harming his peers, particularly Anna, a classmate and magazine model, engaged in conversation by the window of their classroom with her friends. Upon locking eyes with Anna, Kyotaro hastily returns to his book. That look from Anna makes him think that she is looking down on him. This triggers his recurring negative thoughts, a nightly ritual for him. To escape the overwhelming noise in the classroom during lunch, Kyotaro opts to leave. Seeking solace, he heads to the library, a space where he feels comfortable. However, upon opening the door, he is taken aback to find Anna there. Although she attempts to say something to him while eating, her full mouth renders her words incomprehensible. In response, Kyotaro simply replies yes. It just so happens that he and Anna end up alone in the library. At that moment, he starts thinking it's the perfect time to put his plan into action. While discreetly looking through the books, he observes some strange things about her behavior. She's humming like a monkey, and seems to have quite the appetite, which strikes him as a bit odd. Anna appears to be busy preparing for their presentation. It becomes evident that she requires scissors to cut her schoolwork. In a spontaneous gesture, he lends her his box cutter, resulting in him being temporarily without his usual tool or weapon. Later on, he discovers the box cutter on his desk, and it surprises him because she knows which desk is his. As he pays more attention, he starts noticing even more strange things about her behavior. Somehow, this makes him want to secretly offer her help. Then, there's this unexpected moment when they accidentally interrupt a love confession happening in the library between Hara and Kanzaki. Anna, to conceal the presence of another person, Kyotaro, and their eavesdropping, makes Kyotaro produce cat noises as she does as well. It leaves him puzzled about why he keeps helping her despite everything. After school, while in a magazine store, he sees Anna enter the store making a conspicuous effort to attract attention as the model from the magazines. It makes him feel a bit embarrassed on her behalf. Acting on impulse, he decides to purchase the magazine which according to him, just to make up for the two customers she lost. Initially, he decides to toss it away, but then he reconsiders, thinking it would be a waste if he didn't make any use of it at least once. The following day, he notices a senior named Haruya bothering Anna, pressuring her to add him to her line. Without thinking, Kyotaro swiftly rides his bike into the river, creating a diversion. Anna accurately figures out that he did it to assist her, and chuckles when he mentions he hit the gas and not the brakes. She then adds that Kyotaro is quite amusing. Kyotaro finds himself once more in the library, a sacred space exclusively meant for him where no intruders should enter. However, to his dismay, Anna appears yet again, preparing a snack that requires water. Despite his fervent desire for solitude, she repeatedly spills water on the floor as she goes back and forth between the faucet and the library. Observing what Anna does, Kyotaro feels the urge to rectify the situation, recognizing the danger water poses to books. As Anna continues to spill liquid on the floor, she sees Kyotaro wiping the floor, but she glances at the clock and hastily goes back to the faucet to fill the small cup with water once more. In an attempt to lessen the damage, Kyotaro rushes to fetch a glass, only to discover upon his return that Anna has opted for a bowl instead, making him feel angry even more. After eating the candy she mixed, she sees Kyotaro and gives him once again her trash and heads back to their classroom. On a hot day, Anna starts sweating and asking for a change of summer shirt. Kyotaro realizes that Anna has many friends, but why does she come to the library and eat alone? Meanwhile, Adachi tries to peek at her inner suit, but Kyotaro sabotages and stops him. In the library, Kyotaro cools off with a fan, and Anna, who's munching on some food, notices it. She asks to borrow the fan, commenting that it's the type that smells nice. Kyotaro disagrees. Curious, she invites him to come closer and smell it. That's when he realizes she's wearing a swimsuit. Anna's phone rings, and it's Moeko calling to give a heads up that Chihiro is on the way to the library. Quick on her feet, she hides under the desk and instructs Kyotaro to sit down, creating an awkward situation. Chihiro arrives, looking for Anna. Unable to locate her, Chihiro confesses that she's allergic to snacks, so Anna always snacks alone and that is her way of looking after her. Chihiro starts praising Anna, and Kyotaro agrees with everything. Suddenly, Anna pops out. It turns out Chihiro's strategy was to coax her out. After they leave, Kyotaro urgently rushes to the bathroom. During the culture festival, the class creates a haunted house, and Anna spots her name on a tombstone. To protect the real culprit, Hara, Kyotaro takes the blame, saying he is the one who did it. However, Hara confesses that she had innocently used everyone's names, not just Anna's. Anna realizes Kyotaro took the blame to shield Hara. Anna approaches him and apologizes. Kyotaro notices Haruya approaching Anna again, but is relieved when other girls step in to protect her this time. Eventually, Kyotaro and Anna find themselves alone by a display of town maps, 
discovering that their homes are only just over a kilometer apart. Kyotaro suggests taking a photo of it, but Anna takes his phone and snaps a picture of them instead, a keepsake he decides to hold on to until Anna's friends join them. Kyotaro always had an idea for a book, and he started writing a dark fantasy manga. But unexpectedly, he ends up drawing Anna as the main heroine. He goes to the infirmary because of a headache and discovers Anna there dealing with a stomachache. He considers whether to carry out his plan, but she empties her pockets to find medicine, which she then shares with him before leaving. The nurse notices some candies on the table and sees Anna's uniform that she left behind. The nurse throws it and falls on his face and she asks him to return it. The scent of the uniform arouses him. Adachi tells Kyotaro to give Anna a note, thinking it might have something silly. Instead, Kyotaro hands over a drawing of his manga heroine, which looks like her. The boys try a trick to reveal the girls' personalities, but the girls catch on before Anna falls for it. Kyotaro meets Anna at the library again. When she notices some candies missing from her table, she goes over to Kyotaro and opens his hand to check, only to realize that the candies are actually in her pocket. The students are in the gym with their instructor, starting to learn how to play basketball. Anna thinks it's useful because she needs to lose some weight for her photo shoot the next day. As the training begins, Kyotaro reflects on his strange feelings for Anna and wonders why his thoughts and actions always align. Lost in his thoughts, he sits on one side of the gym and notices Anna looking at him. Not paying attention, Anna gets hit by the ball on her face, injuring her nose and bleeding a lot. The instructor takes her to the clinic, and despite thinking it's wrong, Kyotaro follows her to the infirmary. Hiding under the bed, he overhears Anna crying about her nose ruining an important photo shoot while talking to her mom on the phone. Unaware of his emotions, Kyotaro starts shedding tears too. Suddenly, Anna's things fall on the floor, and he sees that she has kept his drawing. All their past encounters flash back to him and realizes something. The next day, Anna comes to school as usual, but everyone keeps asking about her nose and she keeps answering the same thing. Chihiro writes on her nose bandage, saying, she got hit by the basketball. She starts crying in front of her friends and continues to cry when she's alone. Kyotaro sees her crying on the stairs and runs out of tissues to offer. He decides to put tissues on the library tables, but to avoid seeming like a trap, he uses all his tissues and places them on each table. Anna comes and sees all the tissues on the tables, but Kyotaro is a bit disappointed when she opens a snack and uses the tissue to clean snack crumbs off her fingers. Despite that, he is happy to see her back to how she was and smile again. Kyotaro convinces himself that love and infatuation are just the brain acting up like some kind of mental glitch that messes up people's lives. He decides he won't let himself fall for it. Meanwhile, everyone is in the school cafeteria having lunch. Anna puts her milk in her bag without realizing that Kyotaro sees what she's doing. Later, Kyotaro discovers that Anna is planning to use the milk to make puruche. When Anna is about to pour the mixture into the milk, Kyotaro stops her and suggests using a bowl, even telling her where to find one. Teasingly, Anna tells him to go and get one for her. As he goes out and rushes to the EC room, she catches up and reveals she was just kidding, suggesting they go together instead. The EC room is locked, so Anna takes out the puruche and is about to pour it without using a bowl. However, Kyotaro suggests they can find something to use in the science lab. Inside the lab, Anna warns him to lower his voice because someone is in the other room. Finally, Kyotaro prepares the mixture and asks Anna to mix it discreetly. After mixing, she asks him for his finger, dips it in the mixture, and tells him to taste it. After making sure it tastes good, she starts emptying the container by drinking it. Unfortunately, they get caught by a teacher who asks what they're doing in the lab, causing the snack to spill all over Anna in shock. Kyotaro sees Kanaoya looking at Anna and figures she wants to talk to her, so he leaves them alone in the library. Kanaoya says sorry for hurting Anna's nose. Anna is confused and even tells her that she should be the one saying sorry. Serena notices what Kyotaro did and thanks him. Later, Kyotaro sees Anna at the ferry mart. He ends up giving her a ride on his bike to her house. While having a drink, Anna gives Kyotaro the bottle lid. Later, when they get home, she gives him his bottle as a thank you for the ride. Embarrassed, Kyotaro hands her the lid of his bottle, making her laugh. The next day at school, the teacher tells the class they found and collected snack wrappers from the library trash. Bringing snacks into the school is against the rules. Suddenly, the teacher calls Anna and asks if she has any idea who did it. She answers that never threw anything in the trash, so it couldn't be her. After hearing that, the teacher asks her to go to the teacher's office after class. Anna sees Kyotaro with his caring older sister and feels happily jealous because she's an only child. Kyotaro realizes that Anna came to talk to him on purpose, even though she says otherwise. Anna gets in trouble for snacking in the library until Kyotaro points out the lack of evidence. The teacher is so pleased to see Kyotaro interacting with people that they forget to scold Anna. Thankful, Anna declares that they are friends now. The class has the opportunity to go and visit a workplace of their choice. 
but Kyotaro has a definite type of workplace he wants to visit, is those work which offers a glimpse at the darkest corners of society. Unfortunately, their teacher instructs them to form into groups of six with similar interests. Kyotaro, along with some inappropriate boys, wants to be in Anna's group. Kyotaro manages to join Anna's group by influencing Kanzaki to join Hara's group, which Kanzaki is looking forward to joining, as Kanzaki is dating Hara. Anna notices and commends Kyotaro's kind action. Later, Anna and Hara talk about dating, and Anna reveals she has never dated before, which Hara finds hard to believe. After school, heavy rain starts pouring and Anna notices Kyotaro wearing his raincoat, realizing he needs to ride his bike so he doesn't need an umbrella. She borrows his raincoat to go buy an umbrella, but Kyotaro realizes she forgot her purse. He hurries to give it to her, getting soaked in the process. Anna instructs him to get her purse from inside her bag, only for Kyotaro to find out that Anna already has an umbrella. She covers her mistake by claiming it's broken. Eventually, he retrieves her purse, and she asks him to put it in her pocket while her hands still cover his head from the rain. This situation makes them feel uneasy. Kyotaro realizes that there is nothing wrong with him. He likes her. On the day of their visit to their chosen workplace, Anna, her friends, Kyotaro, and Adachi go to a manga publisher. Kyotaro attempts to conceal his otaku side from Anna and does his best not to get too excited about the information they receive about manga. However, she notices and encourages him to enjoy the experience, especially when one of the employees shows them the original Baki manga. Anna takes Kyotaro's hand and asks everyone to step aside, giving him a better view of the said Baki creation. Kyotaro's reaction reveals how amazed he is. In a crowded elevator, Anna and Kyotaro are squeezed together due to the crowded space, he tries hard not to feel uncomfortable but surprisingly realizes that Anna is just as flustered as he is. Opting to close his eyes doesn't make things better. In fact, it feels even worse. The elevator stops but both of them are unaware that everyone has already exited. When Anna comes to her senses, she runs after her friends to catch up. Later, Anna attempts to discuss manga with Kyotaro and suggests lending him some. However, when Chihiro makes a joke about his interest in shoujo manga, Kyotaro angrily convinces himself that they're making fun of him. While Kyotaro goes to the bathroom, Anna waits for him while busy scrolling her cell phone. They suddenly realize everyone else has already boarded the train. Trying to catch up, they run for it but end up missing the train, leaving Anna and Kyotaro at the station. Anna begins crying, feeling responsible for missing the train as she couldn't inform everyone about Kyotaro going to the bathroom. To ease her guilt, Kyotaro buys her a drink and then shoulders the blame, saying he should have informed the others, bringing a smile to her face. This occurs after she imagines Kyotaro announcing to everyone about going to the bathroom. But when she stops laughing and looks on Kyotaro's way, she is surprised to see the distance between them. On the next train, Anna takes hold of Kyotaro's bag, worried they might get separated once more. She wraps her arms around his bag and brings up the other group, Hara's group, subtly asking Kyotaro whether it is better for two classmates dating to be publicly announced or kept as a secret. Caught off guard by her question, all he can respond with is, yes, and maybe. Upon finally meeting their groupmates, Anna quickly offers an apology, but Chihiro insists that she should be the one apologizing as she is in charge of the group and is overly focused on being punctual. Chihiro expresses her apologies again, and Anna reassures her, saying it is okay because everyone makes mistakes sometimes. The two share a hug. Kyotaro wonders who Anna is waiting for outside the school, but he chooses to go past her without being noticed. Then Anna stops him by holding onto his bike, surprising him by revealing that she's waiting to give him the manga series she promised to lend him. Later, she insists he read the manga in the library, but she accidentally stumbles, and her ends up close to his face, making it an uncomfortable situation. Both of them apologize, and they enter the school together. Adachi notices Kyotaro talking to Anna and is curious about why they have become close. Adachi inquires about Anna's love life, but Kyotaro cannot just give him a straight answer. Adachi then warns Kyotaro not to disclose that he's been asking such questions about Anna. Kyotaro becomes more disgusted by Adachi than usual, because his feelings for Anna go beyond just her looks. Recognizing this, Kyotaro begins to question once again whether his feelings for Anna are genuine. A sign saying that eating is not allowed is finally put up in the library, making Kyotaro anxious that Anna might stop coming. Anna and Kyotaro decide to the teacher to ask about the sign because she thinks that they have something so obvious. The teacher shows the candy wrapper she found on the floor of the library saying that if they keep allowing it, there will be no stopping to it. However, Anna keeps snacking anyway. When a teacher almost catches her, Kyotaro grabs her hand to hide the evidence. 
unintentionally melting chocolate on her hand. Anna tells him to go away so she can lick the melted chocolate, and he worries that he may have messed everything up by grabbing her. Surprisingly, she still comes back to the library the next day. Gyotaro searches online and finds out that Anna is on a weekly TV show. He hurries to watch it on TV, but by the time he gets there, it's already over. In their running class, Anna tries to run alongside Kyotaro to have a conversation, but he speeds up to demonstrate that he's faster and she can't outpace him. Anna grabs him, and he reminds her to avoid bothering him when others are present. While looking at him, Anna mentions that she has never seen his right eye before, and smiles at him. They complete the run, and Anna requests Kyotaro's assistance in standing up, purposefully touching hands. Accidentally, Kyotaro and Anna end up switching jackets. Kyotaro attempts to tell Anna about it in their class, but fails. After some time, Anna signals him to go outside the room, and they secretly exchange jackets back in the infirmary. Before returning it, Anna discreetly smells his jacket. Suddenly, she proposes measuring their heights for fun, and unintentionally steps on a weight scale which she immediately covers to hide it from him. Kyotaro is puzzled by her actions. The next day, word goes around that Anna will be in a movie. From Kyotaro's perspective, Anna appears indifferent about the movie, leaving him curious. The teacher rearranges the seating in class, providing cards for students to draw. Anna ends up sitting in front of Kyotaro, with Adachi beside her and Hara next to Kyotaro. Anna becomes jealous when Kyotaro borrows notes from Hara, unaware that he can't see the class board from behind her. Kyotaro tells her that she is the only one he sees, which Anna seriously misinterprets as something else. Hara goes to their teacher and arranges to switch seats putting Anna behind Kyotaro. In the library, Kyotaro inquires about the movie, and Anna quickly asks if he is interested in movies, initiating a conversation about it. She talks about what kind of role she's going to portray. So Kyotaro discovers that Anna's role is smaller than what their classmates believe. She then requests to practice her one line with him, even though it involves calling him a creep. They find privacy in a cramped cupboard. Anna mentions that the movie will premiere in two years, by which time they will have graduated. Kyotaro assures her that he will watch the movie, and she leaves without being able to call him a creep again because that is, she wants to hear from him. Kyotaro watches her TV show, and once again realizes that her role is much smaller than he thought because the show was cut even before she could talk, but he questions why he feels relieved while Anna probably feels upset about it and calls himself the worst. The following day, he is determined not to bring up anything about the TV show, but it turns out she is completely okay with it. From his perspective, Anna still has a long journey ahead before becoming a successful actress. Chihiro catches a cold and is absent from school. Anna expresses the need to sit close and be touchy. However, Anna emphasizes that there are limits to what one can and cannot touch, even among friends. She illustrates these boundaries on a human figure drawn on the board. The next day, Chihiro accompanies Anna to the library to discover what Anna has been up to there. During the conversation, Chihiro inadvertently discloses that Anna frequently talks about Kyotaro, causing Anna to feel embarrassed. Chihiro praises Kyotaro's tutoring skills, believing that Anna spends her lunchtime studying at the library. However, Anna reveals her disappointment, stating that she has never asked Kyotaro to tutor her. Chihiro is further amazed to learn that Kyotaro not only converses normally now, but even smiles, which is contrary to his previous behavior when interacting with girls. During the parent-teacher conferences, Kyotaro's mother is seated next to Anna and her mom waiting for their turn to be called. Kyotaro notices that Anna got her looks from her pretty mom. Seeing them all together is overwhelming. Kyotaro's mom even offers Anna candy, while Anna's mom keeps reminding her to behave appropriately. Kyotaro's mother informs him that she encountered a lovely girl from his class but forgot to inquire about her name. She then asks Kyotaro if he knows who she is. Unaware that Anna is nearby, he responds affirmatively and even mentions her name. Kyotaro is embarrassed when he realizes that Anna overheard him agreeing with his mother about Anna being beautiful. Anna begins getting even closer to him during their library time, which Kyotaro observes. Anna is on the verge of being caught with sweets once more, but when Kyotaro whispers something in her ear to warn her, she becomes so embarrassed that she falls off her chair. Only then does Kyotaro realize that he may have done something wrong. After a brief encounter with Anna in the rain, Kyotaro rides his bike home only to discover that Anna left a bag with tampons in his basket, causing him embarrassment. He hurriedly returns to her, only to find out that the tampons were actually for Anna's mother. Following a peculiar dream about Anna, Kyotaro realizes that the rain gave him a cold. After school, Anna visits to bring him something to eat, and he impulsively invites her for tea. Feeling embarrassed with Anna in his home, he realizes he still wears his pajamas, so he goes to his room. He faints while finding a shirt in his room. Anna assists him but can't resist hugging him while he's delirious. Kyotaro wakes up in different clothes, uncertain if he dreamt what happened until his sister shows him a get-better note left by Anna. His mother confirms that Anna visited and was concerned about him. 
When he returns to school, Anna is purposely waiting for him. Kyotaro notices that Anna has a mild cold. Anna asks if he is better and he answers that he can't remember anything because it seems like a dream. Anna attempts to get Kyotaro's line by asking if he uses it. Kyotaro believes she's just teasing him, thinking that anyone, even those without friends, use line. Despite Anna's efforts to persuade him to share his line, she is unsuccessful. Moiko is thinking of ways to secure a boyfriend before Christmas, and she requests her friends to at least give a Me Too response. Moiko's plan involves exchanging line IDs with all the boys in the class, and Anna agrees, considering it a great idea. For Kyotaro, finding a boyfriend for Anna seems effortless. However, when Anna approaches Kyotaro to get his line ID, Moiko intervenes and secures his line first, leaving Anna frustrated. Kyotaro is unaware of why Anna is glaring at him. The situation eventually makes Kyotaro realize she was asking for his line the whole time, and so he decides to give it to her the next time she asks for it. Moeko asks Anna to get Ishimuro's line ID one of the brightest in the class. Anna mentions that Ishimuro lives in the same apartment building as her. When Moeko asks if they are close, Anna glances at Kyotaro and says yes. She even adds that their parents get along well. This makes Kyotaro even more frustrated. They pressure Anna to approach Ishimuro and get his line ID, but Kyotaro has had enough. He suddenly interrupts and Anna stops and changes her mind while smiling. Haruya asks Anna on a date, but since Chihiro always goes between them, Haruya says that she can come too, because that is actually what he wants right from the start. Being unaware that his motive is to get closer to Anna, Chihiro's stand suddenly changes and agrees to accept the invitation. Later, two girls enter the library and inquire about boyfriends, hinting that Anna might have one. When Anna firmly denies having a boyfriend, the girls realize she's saying it for Kyotaro's sake and decide to leave them alone. When Haruya shows up, Anna pretends to kiss Kyotaro, causing him to leave. Moeko ends up telling Chihiro the truth about Haruya. Angry and convinced that Anna has been using him to fend off Haruya since they met, Kyotaro avoids her for the next two days. He even skips going to the library to avoid being around Anna. Feeling upset, Anna trails after him, going out of their classroom and going down the stairs to confront him. She asks if she did something wrong and begins to cry. Initially, Kyotaro is set on avoiding her, but when he sees her tears, he understands that Anna is not mean enough to manipulate people right from the start. After he apologizes, she spontaneously embraces him, and this time he allows it. They end up talking throughout their entire walk home. Since it is winter break the next day, Anna suggests meeting outside of school. This time, she openly asks for his contact information, and they end up texting each other all night. Kyotaro and Anna decide to meet, mainly for Anna to give Kyotaro the next volume of the manga. Both arrive early for their Christmas Eve meeting. They are supposed to meet at 2 o'clock, but they use the same excuse of wanting to ensure they find the place on time. Kyotaro approaches Anna, but she does not recognize him, because his face is covered with a mask. When Kyotaro inquires about the book, Anna quickly mentions that there is a place she wants to check. Kyotaro notices that Anna has dressed up, and he feels like he looks like a stalker when he sees himself in the mirror while walking. Anna suggests having pancakes. They line up to get a spot inside the pancake restaurant, giving Kyotaro the feeling that it is a first date. He becomes embarrassed upon realizing he can only afford coffee, and struggles to make eye contact with Anna. While enjoying her meal, Anna requests him to take a photo of her, but Kyotaro suggests making a video instead. Concerned about the video being posted, he asks Anna to check it before sharing it, only to find out that she intends to send it to him personally. As he starts watching it, Anna lifts his chin, reminding him not to forget to appreciate the real thing. After eating, she insists on paying since she earns money from work. While shopping for clothes, Anna requests him to choose an outfit for her. At first, he just tells her to buy whatever she likes best. But then, Anna changes her question to what is cuter and points out the dress. When Anna enters the dressing room, it causes him to blush when he hears her changing behind the curtain, so she decides to walk away, but Anna sees her and asks her to come. When Kana shows up, Kyotaro informs Anna that they should not be seen together. But Anna questions why. He just says that now is not the time. Consequently, she pulls Kyotaro into the changing room to avoid being noticed. Due to their closeness, Anna persuades Kyotaro to promise to introduce her to his sister soon. Inside the dressing room, Kyotaro notices that the dress looks great on her and encourages her to buy it. Kyotaro makes an effort to express his enjoyment because he worries he may have been so preoccupied with himself that he did not do much to put her mind at ease. Anna put a scarf around his neck and reveals that she was wearing it earlier but then got too hot. To prevent getting separated on the crowded train, Anna takes hold of Kyotaro's hand and they keep holding hands throughout the entire journey and their leisurely walk home, unsure of when to let go until later. Kyotaro is surprised when Anna expresses the wish to see him again before New Year's Eve, so he refrains from greeting her a happy new year just yet, starting to wonder after all that happened between them if she's aware that he has feelings for her. Four days before New Year, Kyotaro and his family go on to yearly trip to Akita to visit his grandmother. After receiving a message from Anna, the usual food photo she sends, he recalls promising to send her a photo of the snow. 
Eager to capture a better view of it, he goes outside but unfortunately he slips off a cliff. Kana comes out looking for him and sees him down the cliff pretending to take a nap, only to find out that the fall resulted him a broken arm and an early return home the following morning. That night, he decides to send Anna a selfie, revealing his broken arm wrapped in a bandage. Shortly after, he receives a video call from her. After making sure Kana is asleep, he answers the call. Kyotaro is taken by surprise when he sees Kana on his side, looking at his cell phone, but to his amusement, instead of teasing him, she just comments on how cute Anna is and goes back to sleep. Anna quickly returns the call, inviting him to do things together like drinking a milk tea and looking at the moon outside the window he takes a photo of the moon and sends it to Anna before bidding him goodnight. Kyotaro discloses to Kana that the person he was talking to during a video call was Anna, the same person who left a get well note for him when he was sick. Kana expresses a desire to meet Anna. Kyotaro intends to return the books and scarf to Anna, but coincidentally, he encounters her while she is walking her dog. Despite considering giving her a dog keychain as a souvenir, he decides against it. While playing with her dog, Anna asks Kyotaro to try commanding her but it ends up Anna doing the tricks. Anna sits beside him and holds Kyotaro's hand. She shares her intention to give him her muffler, prompting Kyotaro to give her the keychain he got for her, and he is pleasantly surprised by her joyful reaction upon receiving it. They make plans to meet during New Year's shrine visits. On New Year's Eve, Kyotaro unexpectedly runs into some of his classmates, including Anna's friend Moeko and Haruya, who urges him to share Anna's line contact. To protect Anna, Kyotaro refuses to give him what he is asking. Haruya asks for an explanation and he just answers that he does not have any. Mueko listening to their conversation is impressed and convinces him to leave with her, playfully persuading Kyotaro into admitting his feelings for Anna, noting that it has been apparent for a while and she knows about them because he is so obvious. Feeling embarrassed by the unintentional confession, Kyotaro calls Anna at midnight, just wanting to hear her voice and wish her a happy new year. When he hears the voice of Mueko, he says goodbye right away. Realizing that he needs to confess his feelings to Anna soon, Kyotaro makes a resolution to do so. As Anna arrives early, Kyotaro ends up meeting her at the shrine alongside Kana and his parents. Since Anna is alone, they extend an invitation for her to join them. Kyotaro's sister, Kana, encourages him to greet Anna and say hi, secretly wanting to watch their conversation. Anna notices Kyotaro with his family and introduces herself. They head to a temple to make wishes and Anna assists Kyotaro since his arm is broken. As they join Kyotaro's family, Anna asks about his wish. Although he didn't get a chance to make one, Kyotaro says he wished for things to stay the same. Anna bids goodbye, while Kyotaro plans to meet her again soon. Kana praises Kyotaro for handling the situation maturely. Before moving on, Kana grabs Kyotaro, aiming to catch up with Anna and make a better first impression. Finding Anna eating, Kana invites her to their home, to which she immediately agrees. During the walk, Kana thinks Kyotaro has a good chance with Anna since she bought food for him. At Kyotaro's home, Anna takes off her jacket and shoes, and Kyotaro notices she has his keychain. Concerned about Kana discovering the lie, Kyotaro tries to grab the keychain, making Kana think he is making a move on Anna. Kana asks what she should call Anna, and Anna plays along to tease Kyotaro. Kana shares her yearbook, surprising Kyotaro. Anna asks for pictures from the school excursion, but Kana reveals that Kyotaro didn't attend any of them. Kana leaves for friends, suggesting Anna stay with Kyotaro for leftover soup. Kyotaro eavesdrops on Kana's conversation conversation, and Kana thanks Anna for being close to Kyotaro. Surprising Kana, Anna asks if she can call her sis, and Kana answers that she will only allow it if she will let her call her Anna-chan. Kana leaves, and Anna enters the living room. Kyotaro plans to hide the albums, but she follows him to his room. She talks about Kana, takes the album, and asks about two boys from Kyotaro's past, Kinoshita and Takano, whom he hasn't spoken to in a while. Kyotaro, finding himself alone with Anna, gets flustered when she stumbles upon a magazine with her pictures under Kyotaro's blanket. As he tries to conceal it, he accidentally falls on top of her, causing embarrassment for both. Slowly, Anna pushes him away and gets up. Surprisingly, Anna is not upset and instead takes copies of Kyotaro's photos, promising that he can see her yearbook pictures once they meet again. This leaves Kyotaro puzzled, as it seems like she's inviting him to visit her house. In the past, Kyotaro lost friends because of his grades, causing them to attend different schools. The following day at school, feeling compelled to say his appreciation, Kyotaro tells Anna that she is the reason he can now enjoy going to school. In response, Anna hugs him, and he hugs her back. However, Moeko witnesses an awkward situation and mistakenly assumes they have engaged in a romantic act. 